Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed once again with a sensational topic, meta-analysis in five minutes. Welcome back. Meta-analysis in five minutes. Yes, can we learn meta-analysis in five minutes? Of course you can. Of course, of course, everyone can. And this is what I will do today. If you follow this video, watch this video, and remember the steps, you will be able to understand meta-analysis in five minutes. Of course, you cannot do it in five minutes, but at least you can understand it in five minutes. And I will make sure that I finish this video in five minutes. Let's begin. Meta-analysis. So what is meta-analysis? Meta-analysis is actually a review article in which you combine so many previous papers together and write one paper out of it, but it is statistical in nature. So yes, it's a systematic review actually that is statistical in nature. And it's usually done on papers that are clinical trials. So you combine so many papers, those are clinical trials. So you collect previously published clinical trials and you write one paper out of it. So that's simple definition of meta-analysis. Now let's begin. So the first thing first we need to do is divide meta-analysis into four phases. The first phase, phase one, is the planning phase. What do you do in the planning phase? You decide your research topic. Now you know you are writing a meta-analysis, so you decide your research topic. Once you decide your research topic, the next, next thing is to decide your research question. Of course, the PICO question is the main thing of systematic review and meta-analysis. So make sure your meta-analysis follows a research question that is PICO. So P for population or problem, I for intervention, C for comparison or control group and O for outcome. You need to have all of these four components in your research question. Now, make sure you collect all the data possible after that, but we'll talk about this. The next thing is once you have this, set an inclusion exclusion criteria. You have inclusion exclusion criteria ready. Once you have done your inclusion exclusion criteria, what studies to include, what studies not to include once you have it. Now, the next step is to register your protocol for your meta-analysis on Prospero website. Yes, it's optional, but you can do it so that you can tell others that, okay, I'm working on this paper on this meta-analysis, so you can work on any other topic. So that's why we do Prospero registration, but it's optional. For clinical trials, it is mandatory by the organizations or the institutions. If you belong to any institution, um, it is a mandatory requirement most of the times, but systematic review and meta-analysis, it's, it's an option. Now, this is phase one. Phase one is done. Planning phase is done. Next phase is the search strategy phase. Now, how do you do search strategy? You set the goal of searching your data and you decide the databases. Most common databases, whatever are in your field, if let's say, for example, you are a healthcare person, then PubMed, PubMed Central, Medline, Web of Science, Scopus, Embase, all of those are famous databases. You can use these databases to search your papers, previously published papers. These are the websites where you can find previously published papers. In easy words, databases are actually websites. Now, once that is done, now, of course, you need to remove the duplicates because some studies will be duplicate. In, in each database, you will find some repetition of articles. So you need to remove the duplicates. Once you remove the duplicates, the next step is to do the screening. And screening is, in, is done in two steps. The first screening is the title and abstract. So you make sure you check the title and abstract and whatever are relevant papers. After removal of duplicates, of course, you will keep those articles and two people will do it. Your second author will do that. that. Once you do it, now the next step is to move forward and do your quality appraisal. Once that is done, then data extraction. Once that is done, you do the data, data synthesis. Now you decide what statistical model, what model you will use for meta-analysis. Now this is the phase three, meta-analysis. The models are random effects model or fixed effects model. You can use any of those models, but I would highly recommend use random effects model. And that's what many experts believe that you should use a random effects model because random effects model assumes that there is, there is, a, there is no true effect. I have discussed that in the previous video. Once you do that, now check the effect size of each study, then check. The, then you have the cumulative effect size of all the studies. Once you have it, you do the uh, heterogeneity test by doing the forest plot. Once you draw the forest plot, you have the forest plot, you know how many studies are homogeneous, how many are heterogeneous. Once that is done, then you do the publication bias to see if the studies were excluded because of negative findings. Once you have it, you draw the funnel, funnel plot, for publication bias. Now the next step is you do the 
sensitivity analysis, and the ne next step is subgroup analysis. Once you do that, then you move to the step number four, that is writing. And in writing, you follow Prisma checklist, prefer reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. You write the abstract, introduction, method, results, discussion, conclusion. And of course, you give the references. This is how you write your meta-analysis. And I have explained everything, I hope, in five minutes. And you will enjoy this video. So if you are still confused, watch this video again. Watch it again so you can learn. If you still have confusion, go to my other videos and meta-analysis in which I have discussed it, discussed this topic in more details. Stay tuned, keep learning, keep watching. We'll meet again in another video. Thank you.